Okay, so I found myself in a very unique situation the other night, and um, my friend Joni Vett got tickets to see Bruce Springsteen at the very last concert of the Los Angeles Sports Arena last Saturday night. And he's played there 35 times, more than, far more than any other performer. And what was unique about the situation is that the seats, when I got there, they were directly in the center, 12 rows up, and be, up in the center of the stage from the stage, but directly behind the stage. So it wasn't really quite backstage with Bruce, but it was backstage of Bruce. And it was a unique perspective of what Bruce Springsteen actually sees at a concert. It was unique for me also because it, they kept the lights on during the whole, perform, most of the performance. So the crowd was just amazing and I thought it was something I'd share with you. So let me go back a little bit. I first listened to Bruce Springsteen myself at the Trenton War Memorial in uh, 1972. And that's when I looked like this. And this, and yes, that's a green gremlin, my first car. Anyway, Artie and Mike and Hal and the, the guys jumped in the car. We went there and at the same time, Bruce Springsteen also had a beard. So I've been listening to Springsteen through the years and I thought that it was an appropriate thing to share with my patients and friends um, because let's face it, everybody likes Bruce Springsteen. He's one of the world's most unique and singular performers. So. The other thing that my friend um, Dan and Peggy pointed out to me is that this is a very historical, it was a very historical evening. It was the very last night, the last concert before they're tearing it down. As a matter of fact, Bruce Springsteen played his song Wrecking Ball in honor of that, in recognition of that. And it was built in 1959 by the same architect who designed the Capitol buildings, um, the Capitol Records building in uh, Hollywood that's shaped like a record, and um, the Cinerama Dome, and some other things. It has, um, it was inaugurated by uh, Richard Nixon in 1959 and hosted the Democratic National Convention in 1960. Pink Floyd played there, Grateful Dead played there, Michael Jackson played there, but they only played a couple concerts apiece. Springsteen liked it because it was a very intimate venue. There were no super, um, super special seats or box seats. Everybody was a very um, working class venue. He was a very strong influence on me, starting at a very young age. I played, tried to emulate him on the piano. It was, I thought about doing this blog because the seating was so singular to see exactly what went on during the concert and how the crowd re reacted to Bruce Springsteen. Because this is stuff he sees all the time, but we don't really see it. We're sitting far back or even up front, but we're just kind of staring at the stage. We're not really seeing this crowd. Many times they close the lights off and it's hard to see what's happening. But there was such tremendous excitement this evening that I just wanted to share some of it with you. So here's one clip of the... Um, the setup from the backstage. Here's another clip of um, another view of the audience light. I guess now they used to in my day they used to light uh, lighters, and now they don't let lighters in the venues, so they put up the uh, flashlight on their cell phones, and uh, that's a so it's a kind of a magical floating kind of look. And also here's a clip from Born to Run.
the closest I'll ever come to playing with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Well, it was a pleasure making this clip, and if you really want to listen to a couple of performances by Bruce, just click on the following links, and it'll take you to a couple songs that I recorded in their entirety. And believe me, I didn't feel like recording it. I felt like dancing. But I wanted my friends to see this. So, there you are, and thank you. Talk to you soon.